In the previous episodes of the series, I mentioned that as the conversation between the user and an assistant goes, an assistant makes predictions for a set of commands that represent how the user would like to progress the conversation further. In some situations, those commands are very simple text responses that an assistant should send to the user as a follow-up. In other cases, those commands can represent sophisticated actions that actually perform specific tasks. So in this episode, I would like to cover what actions are available in Calm and how you can use them or implement custom actions as you build your assistant. In general, there are three types of actions available in Calm. Response templates. Those are very simple text responses that an assistant will send back to the user when they are predicted. They can be enhanced with lots of different dynamic details like links, images, buttons, slot values, and more. You can define response templates in a domain.yaml file under responses section. Keep in mind that the names for response templates should always start with a prefix utter. This is how your assistant will know that a specific predicted action, in this case response template, is a simple text response that an assistant should respond with. Custom actions. It's a type of action that can include any type of custom code. With custom actions, you can implement any type of behavior from connecting to a database and extracting some necessary details, calling an API, all the way to implementing human handoff where the conversation is handed over to an actual human agent. So with custom actions, you can really enable your assistant to perform specific tasks. And finally, default actions. Default actions are implemented in Calm by default and they are used by the dialogue understanding component when driving the conversation. You can always customize default actions to personalize your assistant. Now let's dive into each type of these actions in more detail and see how they can be used when building your assistant. Response templates is the easiest way to enable your assistant to respond back to the user. With response templates, you can implement simple text responses that an assistant should send to the user when those specific responses are predicted. As mentioned previously, you can always enhance those templates with uh, more dynamic details like links, images, buttons, and more. Here we have a very simple example of how responses can be implemented. Responses are defined in your domain.yaml file under responses section. In this example, we have an implementation of a very simple response that is intended to cheer the user up when they are sad. So when this response template utter cheer up is predicted, an assistant will send the user a message saying, here is something to cheer you up. And you can also see that we have a tag image with a specific URL. This means that an assistant will also send the user a link to a fun image to cheer them up. For each response label, you can always define more than one template that an assistant could use to respond back to the user. In this case, if you have more than one potential template, an assistant will randomize those templates and make the conversations a little bit more natural. For example, here we have two potential ways of how an assistant would greet the user and ask about their day. One more thing that I would like to point out about this example is that in these templates, we are also including specific slot values to make these templates more interesting and more dynamic. So when this specific response utter greet is predicted, an assistant will check what is the current value of the slot name and will input that value into that specific template. So for example, if the current slot value of slot name is Christina, an assistant will use the value Christina to input into those templates. So assistant will say something like, hello, Christina, how is your day? Another very powerful component of Calm that can take the interactions between the user and an assistant to the next level is called contextual rephrasing. This component uses LLMs to look into the templated responses that you created and create variations of possible responses that an assistant could send back to the user while keeping the context of the overall conversation. 
It's a very powerful feature that can make the conversations between the user and an assistant more natural and more interesting. So let's have a look at how you can implement contextual rephrasing for your assistant. So the first thing that you have to do is to configure the contextual rephrasing component. This can be done inside of your endpoints.yaml file, and you can provide this component under the NLG tag. This is basically it in terms of the configuration. And now you have a lot of different options of how you can configure the actual component of contextual rephrasing. There are many different ways of using the contextual rephrasing, from rephrasing a specific template to rephrasing all of the responses. For example, if you want to rephrase only the specific response, you can achieve that by adding rephrase true flag to the responses configuration as follows. Here we have a very simple example of utter greet response. As you can see, we have the message, hey, how I can help you. And we provide the rephrase true flag to this specific response. This means that only this specific response will be rephrased by the contextual rephraser component. If you want to enable contextual rephrasing to all of the responses, you can do that by going back to your endpoints.yaml file and adding rephrase all flag and setting it to true. Contextual rephraser is an amazing component that can make the interactions between the user and an assistant more natural. There is one caveat though that I would like to cover about this component. Contextual rephraser is using LLMs to create the variations for the responses that an assistant will send back to the user. This means that the user might respond differently to a specific messages from an assistant that would derail the user from achieving their goal efficiently. This is why if you are using contextual rephraser component for your assistant, you should always monitor the performance of your assistant and make modifications when necessary. Now let's talk about custom actions. Custom actions are extremely powerful and they enable you to write custom code for any action or task that you would like your assistant to execute when that specific action is predicted. This can really be anything from sending the user a simple text response, just like we implemented with response templates, all the way to calling an API or implementing a human handoff and anything beyond that. Now let's have a look at how custom actions can be implemented. Custom actions are typically written inside of the actions.py file of your project. Custom actions usually consist of the following structure. You will have a class with a specific name that represents what that custom action is about. And custom action will always have two key functions. One of them is called name and the other one is called run. Name class simply defines the name of the custom action. This name can also be considered as the label that can then be defined inside of the domain file of your assistant and used inside of the flows for your assistant to use. Your assistant will know that a specific action is a custom action because all custom actions have a prefix action. This is how your assistant will know that when this specific custom action is predicted, it should execute the custom code that is written inside of the run function. Run function defines what happens when a specific action is predicted. In some cases, it might be running a specific check for a value of the variable. In other cases, it might be setting a specific slot, etc. In this example, we have a very simple custom action that checks if the user has enough money in their account to make a money transfer. Here we have the balance that is hard-coded to make this example a little bit simpler, which is assigned a value of 1000. Then we can check what is the amount that the user would like to transfer. We can access the slot values using the tracker component inside of the custom actions and using a method getSlot. In this case, we would like to check what is the amount that the user would like to send. Finally, we are checking if the user has enough money to make the money transfer, and we are setting the slot that the user has sufficient funds. One more detail about custom actions that you should keep in mind is that custom actions run on a separate server than your assistant. This means that you will be able to make changes to your custom actions code without having to restart and retrain your assistant every single time. 
You can start a custom action server by using a command rasa run actions. This command will start the server, register the custom actions you have implemented, and will make those actions available for your assistant. And last but not least, let's cover default actions. Default actions are available for your assistant out of the box, and they enable your assistant to perform actions like listening for the user's input, restarting the conversation, etc. Once again, these actions are implemented in Calm by default, so you don't have to implement them from scratch, but you can always make the modifications to the default behavior. Under the hood, default actions are implemented in a very similar way as custom actions that we just covered. They have a very similar structure and they have the same prefix for the action labels. So for example, action listen will simply listen to the user's input. Action restart will restart the conversation and reset all of the slots. Default actions can be customized by simply overriding their behavior inside of your actions.py file. For example, let's say you would like to override the default action, action session start. By default, this action will start the new session between the user and an assistant. And it will do that by carrying over all of the existing slots to the new conversation. Let's say you would like to change that behavior and instead you would like to carry over only user's name and their phone number. You can achieve that by updating the action action session start in your actions.py file by implementing a new static method which collects the slot's name and phone number and then extends the new session with these values. After updating this default action, you can restart the custom action server and test the performance of your assistant. Actions is such a powerful component that can really make your assistant functional and transform it from a simple conversational companion into a powerful assistant that can really do things and perform targeted tasks. Now that you know how you can implement actions for your assistant, let's move on and talk about how you can enable your assistant to handle unexpected situations that happen during the conversation with the user. For that, I will see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.